This week's episode of Still Untitled is made possible with support from Microsoft Surface, introducing the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. With its beautiful touchscreen, you'll experience stunning graphics with razor-sharp resolution, now available with a 13.5 or 15-inch screen. And with the latest processors, there's no project that the Surface Laptop can't handle. It's both light and powerful, so you can get more done on the go. Visit surface.com slash laptop3 to learn more. That's surface.com slash laptop three. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Hello. Hello Welcome. again. It seems like we just did this a few months ago. I know. I've changed. Yes. Yeah, uh, what are you wearing, changed. Adam? I am wearing uh, replica NASA coveralls and a replica NASA physical training uh, uh, shirt um, from Luna Replicas. My friend Max Kaiserman uh, has a website, lunareplicas.com. Go there and get some of his incredible NASA stuff. Really good replicas of NASA hardware and software and clothing um, is hard to come by. There's a lot of bad replicas out there, but these guys are doing amazing it's, stuff. It's for you who uh, would be discerning about the quality of a, a meatball patch, for example. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so for instance, Matt, Max, you'll notice, Will, you will notice, mm -hmm. He literally bought an old 70s vector-based machine and backs this with cheesecloth like the original. So yeah. it's as shitty as the early patches, that not is. all refined like that modern It was ones. done with punch cards on an ancient, right? ancient yeah. pre-computer computer. So that's the level of fidelity he brings to this. And is it the same saying. blue, the same fabric as the jacket? Uh, it's very close as, to the same kind of yeah. twill that Ooh. the jacket's made out of. Yeah. Those are nice. What you didn't know is that we prepared an enema in the other room so we prepare <laughs> you for your Mercury Authentic <laughs> Training and as soon as the Why are you is doing over. this to me? Um, <laughs> Sorry, we're quoting cool. uh, 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 right stuff. And, yeah. uh, Scott Glenn? Uh, yeah, I think it's Scott Glenn. Who sits there with the enema. Yeah. He's the one that does the Jose Jimenez. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the guy who plays Gus Grissom, right? I believe or is it Alan Shepard? No, Grissom is played by um, Fred Ward. Oh, right. So it must, be, it must have been... Uh, I think Scott Glenn plays Carpenter, but... I could be wrong. I about can't remember. That. The, the problem with that movie is a lot of those guys look alike because they're all like middle-aged white guys well, they with set the buzz guts. But also, also it's, a, it's a murderer's row of great actors. Like Lance yeah. Henriksen oh, yeah. is in there, yes. like buried. <laughs> you know, yeah. you forget all these amazing yeah. people. Yeah. I, I haven't yeah. watched that in probably fifteen years. I should it's go back. And watch it. I watched it last year and it really holds up. I can't remember. The book is one of my like in, in the. Tom, like the new journalism, Tom Wolf, Ken Kesey, it's, Hunter S. Thompson. You know, it I, is riveting. I didn't read it until Jen Schachter told me to read it. Oh, yeah. um, and by the way, in the movie, when they're walking down that long hallway, you know where that was shot? No. That was shot on 3rd Street and 22nd. Here, here in San what? Francisco. Yeah, so uh, Colossal Pictures, which was down off of Quint Street, where I worked with Jamie Heineman in the early 90s, Colossal Pictures in the in the, in the 80s, when they made the right stuff, did all the special effects. Yeah. And um, when they needed that long hallway shot, um, there's that long factory building in Dogpatch on the east side of 3rd Street. Um, oh, and the, Amer a, the, the American building is yeah, where they shot like that? It's a 1,200-foot long hallway, and that's where they shot It's where Revision 3 used to be. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, I know what that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, wow, yeah, that is I amazing. Totally I've been that. there. Yeah. I walk down that hallway. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you have. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> San Francisco. You never know what they film here. Hey, uh, as well, we're recording this a week oh, here before comes the segue. you're listening to this. But in San Francisco, as you're listening to this, they're filming the Matrix Four. <sighs> Wait, what? Yep, they're making Downtown, a fourth Matrix. Yes. They're making the, the Wachowskis are making the fourth Matrix right now, and it's. I know downtown San Francisco. Um, you got to remind me after this podcast. I've got to reach out to the people, people I know that, yes. that know the Wachowskis and see if we can't get tested on that. We set. need to I really figure want to. if you this are out. a tested listener and you're working on this production. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm coming for you. I want to. We don't I even necessarily all the bring, awesome. Yeah, we, we can bring cameras or even not bring cameras. We, we, we can just show up with coffee if you want. <laughs> yeah, Norm, Norm's a good grip. We'll exactly. bring a we'll bring a robot. Exactly. Um, that's really, really exciting. I'm, and we could bring a robot. I know. I'm, that was a good segue. Uh, well, was, I, it, I was it on purpose? I no, it was okay. on purpose. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> wow. Hey, we teased wow. this last week when we recorded uh, the last it, episode, but we have a Boston Dynamics spot robot. We do. You have one that for this whole year. For this whole year, we are developing for him. We are going to give him some new skills, um, and we are going to also help him walk out of the uncanny valley, hopefully, so that he doesn't creep people out. Because when I see Spot, I see a magnificent piece of engineering and a solution to 
really interesting problems that we might not have even encountered yet. Uh, and I, I see a future that I like a lot of people when they see spot, they, they see a different narrative and I get it. I get why they see that narrative. And I know that they're affected by things like metalhead, the beautiful ep season four episode of uh, black mirror. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would like everyone to see the engineering you're, feat that I witness. You're when trying I see to it. get on the good side of the robots before it, they come. It, for it's us. a fascinating thing because that's so wrong. We, all of us. Over the past, you know, decade or so, have seen the videos that Boston Dynamics has put out, mm -hmm. and Spot is of you know that DNA, but it's not the Atlas robot. It's not the bipedal robot. It's not it's, big dog. It's not yeah. big dog. It has a very specific purpose. Now it inherits a lot of the engineering mm -hmm. and design philosophy that went into those, but this is uh, this is for a very specific purpose. Mm -hmm. it's, it is for surveying. It's for constructions for industry well, and use. It, and, it's and a tool, it, and it's an uh, it's a you know, and it is, it's very much a tool with very few attachments right now. Like it doesn't map the room. It looks at the ground in front of it and figures out how to move over it without incident. Um, it took me a couple of weeks of having it here because mm -hmm. we've had it now for uh, a, a few a weeks. Month, yeah. Um, it took me a while to realize I didn't have to steer it away from things, right? It moves, mm. it has its own it's, sense of proprioception. I was shocked. And does that its it can, own moving I was out of shocked the way. it can navigate your shop. Yeah. Like this is. I look at this room, it's a nightmare for humans, much less, you know. Yeah, it spot yeah. does it fairly handily. That's yeah. something that, you know, we have a video out and you should watch the video because we did take it to uh, one of your favorite places. Alameda, Alameda County Alameda, Sheriff Bomb exactly, Range. Exactly. And really try to put it through its places because it is, that's an open area, right? An yeah. environment where spot would likely operate. Uh, but I don't think people understand it's both physically uh, controlled with uh, manual control. I can't. It can't right? be manually controlled. Yeah, so there is this controller with a screen. It's essentially an Android tablet with two sticks, you know, almost like a, a video game controller. And you can use a two-stick control to to pilot it. Yeah. Uh, and look at the screen on the camera. Exactly. On the device. And, you can, yeah. and you're seeing what Spot sees. You're seeing exactly. the view of the world that he is witnessing. So it has uh, kind of structured um, light sensors, so infrared and, 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 and visions. These um, There's some uh, laser scanning white. going on. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any LiDAR, actually. It's no, infrared it, it's, light. It's slam, bounce back. Right. So it's, it's very much like um, the Microsoft Connect or the Intel RealSense mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cameras. And it has an array of those all around. Um, so that's where... I think the magic in it is how easily it, it lets you control it, direct it without having to think about things like obstacles. What if it bumps into this exactly. thing? Like, how's it going to make it over that obstacle? When you were showing it to me and you just tapped on a section of the floor from your shop end of the shop to like by the by the pool table, yeah. and it just was like, okay, I got this, and walked over there and kind of shimmied over to the left to avoid an obstacle, and then walked around, and then got to where it was supposed to be, and then you did the same thing by backing it up, and I was just like, oh. Okay, this is this 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 works better than <laughs> it, I expected. Uh, you know, the the Boston Dynamics folks have been friends of mine for a few years, and uh, we've had a lot of time to under to to get to know each other. And I've been seeing, I've been following their progress actually since the early '90s. That's the first time uh, Mark Raybert's early work came across my came across my uh, attention, uh, and it's so exciting to have him here. We turn him on every day. We play around with different things. We have a whole bunch of different plans for him. Um, and just like a good any good TV show, there are some things we want to do that are part of an overall plot. And there are some bottle episodes. Uh, I even have an idea for helping him to poop. <laughs> um, <laughs> stars, perhaps? Even better. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but yeah, the video, the first video is up is a, is a little taste. And I'm very excited how well the video has done. I, and I think the, the response, I mean, there's a response online and also the response in person. I want to talk about both of those. Like mm -hmm. people have already come up by watching the video with a lot of like the same direction. They know when they see you and Spot together, of course, there's going to be... You know, if you're cosplay, 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 yep, yep, and then yep. we're thinking in those terms, mm -hmm. right? Like we are. We're uh, thinking, I mean, one of the lovely things about producing a series like we are currently producing is we know what the expectations are, and yeah. it's really fun to both meet them and change them and modify them. That's actually some of the most fun of the storytelling. And then spot in the wild, which something we haven't shown. Like you were able, like you've walked. The streets of the mission. Yeah, with Spot. Yeah, talk talk about that. We we uh, uh, the first day we had him. Uh, at the end of that day, I was like, I want to take him home. I want to run him around my house. He's got to climb the stairs of my house. And so, uh, it was raining, uh, and he is uh, relatively water resistant. Uh, okay. And we walked him from here to the house. Uh, it's a few blocks, and I mean the most amazing. Why is he a him? Uh, this feels right. 
ish. I, I, it's sort of a default. Okay. I am being very open to the character of Spot. I have also, I, yesterday I was calling it she. Okay. Um, and I also may, I started playing around in my head with some acronyms or ideas about a name that could be specific to him. People keep asking what's, what's the name. And my feeling is unless and until, right? Like something, if something naturally occurs, it will occur. And if it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Um, but people, they see it on the street and they just immediately pull out their phones, like, holy cow, like just right. watching it. But the best is children seeing it. Like, it's not like children have a great scope of all the things that are going on in the world, but they see this thing on the street and like, they can tell something really remarkable is happening in front of them and their brains kind of like, it's, it's, it's get the it's, smile of, it's the thing, it's the look on kids' faces they got when they get, went to Maker Fair. Like you're walking around Maker Fair and a kid sees R2-D2 rolling up door right, to right. like, oh, it, this is real. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, so the, cool. The thing that I want to tease before we move off of Spot is that um, with the things we want to do with him this year, we are rounding up a number of collaborators to help in this endeavor that is truly exciting. And, and um, old colleagues of mine and friends and people I admire. I think we can go as far to say like a lot of the people we know work in the business of imagining the future, whether it's mm -hmm. actually building the machines and engineering or even just conceptually in terms of the artistic world. And and what that future means to us as a society, as individuals, how we respond to it, what we expect from it, and what we don't expect. And some of the best responses have been introducing Spot to those folks who have done nothing, who've de dedicated so much of their career to imagining just from a theoretical or artistic standpoint, you know, whether it's the way a robot moves or mm -hmm. the way it should look, and they are coming in contact with something that is of their imagined world. Yeah. And that is super cool. It's really it's, because they don't have to worry about the engineering when they're when they're coming up with those stories. Right. So we're taking a piece of of it's it's like science fiction and the real world have yeah. real world have intersected in a in a really thrilling mm -hmm. way. And you saw you saw it in the video. I, I don't know. If, I mean, it must have been intentional. But the way when you, when any of us operate it, our natural inclination is to try to puppet it. Like their spot has a yep. has a head tilt. And I don't know, <laughs> I mean, it has a functional purpose in terms yeah. of the way the legs can move and move around things, but we all want to kind of give it that head tilt yeah. and have it like perch up and, 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 and sit. Um, and that's part of some of the most fun we've had so far. Indeed, indeed. And I mean, we haven't even started to play with its kinematics of how it moves. Yeah. And that's definitely going to be something uh, we, we delve into. I, I can't wait to see more. It's, yeah. it's been fascinating watching. <laughs> We're already cutting video number two right Ooh. now. Yeah, so that should be out in hopefully a couple, yeah, like a week or two at most by the okay. time you'll see I that. actually think we now have the... Two videos after that already pretty yes. planned. So we're good till like May, June, yeah. even. That's Could almost be? half a it's year. It's all about we're... executing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to clip there. Um, <laughs> hey, you've been recently, I saw you posted on Twitter, or was, maybe it was a separate conversation, but you've been enjoying the Criterion collection. Um, indeed. Uh, 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 Peter Becker, who, who is runs the Criterion uh, channel, organization, Criterion collection, is a friend of mine. Uh, and um, what, I, a, what a plum job that must be. He's a wonderful guy, and he loves film so much. I interviewed Guillermo del Toro for him for the Criterion uh, I don't think it's a plum job. I think it's a stressful oh, as heck job I, because but he gets it's to, so subjective. And it, all I'm sure all, nothing, everything here is like, why isn't this film in there? I mean, well, I'm sure. I'm sure that. But then when you look at the channel, you see all the different ways he's intersected different directors yes. with other directors to talk about film yeah. and to really go into the depth of how this came to be, why this is important, what it means culturally, what it means, you know, plot wise. From uh, Armageddon to Zardoz, probably. So I will say, having a Samsung television. It was hard to get the, the Criterion app. Channel yeah. app on Samsung. They don't play together right mm. now. And this is part of this weird sequestration, who owns the standard landscape. Can it, we can we talk about this for a sec? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what my fix okay. was. Yeah. If you have a Samsung TV, here's what works. It, it's not enough to just sign up for the Roku app on the Samsung apps. You actually have to get an external Roku stick what? It's 25 bucks. Oh. Attach that to your Samsung TV. But once you do, you don't need to use the Roku remote. Your Samsung remote will operate the channel just fine, which is that as I no, thought, it's brilliant. The HDMI CC stuff does that, yeah. Um, and then uh, 
I've been I've been obsessed with it. So uh, actually, I said the 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 night Huxley passed, I wanted a mood of a film. So I watched Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love, which mm-hmm. was exactly the right thing for me at that moment in time. Last night, when I couldn't get sleep because my sleep patterns are still abysmal, <laughs> I watched most of Rafifi, the original heist film, which is a French New Wave film um, that I don't know if it's New Wave exactly, but it's like from that era ish. And in the middle is an hour long heist with no dialogue and it's absolutely riveting. Ooh. Yeah, no, it's, this is, it's, you're watching something really special and you see so many movies have borrowed from this since then, from the bank job with Jason Statham to mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Oceans, oh, I love the film. Oceans films. I, so I haven't, before we go on about Criterion, I have real concerns about the apps built into TVs, especially on like low end models that are priced at an incredibly low, low price range. Yeah. Um, you think the, it's a way that people are going to end up paying more for cable and all that? No, than... they're collecting data. Oh, they're collecting a oh, right, ton right, right. of data about what you watch, what you play, what things you use your TV for. And I, I think even I, I, I mean, we still have an Apple TV plugged in, right? Right. Like, and that's that's the thing we use because I kind of trust Apple with privacy stuff. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> don't know if it's justified or not. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. If it, I, I'd be interested to hear what people think. That's why I'm bringing it yeah, up because I don't yeah. know anything about it. I haven't I haven't done the research yet. We were working on an episode of TechPod about that, and I would love to get feedback from people who maybe know more. Um, and you can hit me on Twitter or comments. I'll read comments. And Criterion had to spin up their own service because previously they were part of Filmstruck. Mm-hmm. And we've championed that before. And unfortunately went away and um, this was the, the response for that to to take that collection the licenses they have to allow you to watch you know this selection of film otherwise you would not be able to I, find anywhere and it's been spectacularly successful for them and oh good yeah I'm so it happy. has it's been really really stunning um and seriously if you're wondering whether you should sign up for criterion ju- you do it's I, a stunning film education in a channel uh, with beautiful prints. Uh, really, like it's just great. I'm, it's like I'm I'm just cracking the, the surface of I, it now. I didn't know it was live yet, so I'm going to go sign up <laughs> as soon as we go. As soon as I get home, you're gonna um, love it. Yeah, uh, one film that's going to be on there, I'm sure, at some time. And I don't. I'd love to get him on the podcast at some point. Talk about yep. the curation process. Next time he's here, we yeah, totally have him on the podcast and and ask him when is a movie like Parasite going to hit the Criterion Collection. Well, and Bong Joon-ho wow, has, has interviewed a bunch on on in different on, in different things on this. Um, no, yeah, thanks for the... the no. well that done. was exceptional. Yeah. <laughs> That's really, really seamless. Uh, we've been wanting to talk about Parasite for weeks, and the holdout has been... Um, I'm sorry. Someone, we will just refer to them as Suspect W. <laughs> <laughs> I but, think you're a werewolf. <laughs> I have only ever been a werewolf once. Uh huh. That's what that's werewolf talk right there. No, but there. let me tell you, when I was the werewolf, it was here. We did a huge night of werewolf games here in the cave. Ben Ha and a bunch of other folks. Harper and Harper was here. Some of those guys. Uh, yeah. And my son, Thing Two, was playing with us, and he was like 19 at the time. And the only time I was the werewolf, he could tell I was the werewolf because he was the seer, and I somehow managed to convince people that not only was I not a werewolf, but he was not the seer. And it unhinged him oh. being so duplicitously like <laughs> slammed by me in competition. We, we play One Night Ultimate, which is basically no sleep, so you just do, you get one one night of werewolf, and then it's done. Oh. And they, they build a bunch of extra rules, oh, roles, wow. so that you can get all the information you need on one pass. Oh my god. And uh, uh, I will bring you a copy of that as well. It is phenomenal. It's great for people who don't you can play with like five people or four people yeah um we play with my seven-year-old oh wow it is spectacular watching her learn how to be duplicitous and detect duplicitousness well and seven is just about the age that kids start to be able to hold competing concepts in their head we've talked about this before i played my boy when they were seven i played them who's on first yeah Mm -hmm. right and watching their hungry little brains grab these these tensions of language and enjoy them is is super. Nobody thrilling. appreciates a terrible pun like a seven year old. Not not. But parasite. I cannot. Parasite. But yes. parasite. Um, I've been dying to talk about this film because uh, so Ben Acker, friend of the channel and good friend of mine, uh, half of Acker and Blacker, the writers of Thrilling Adventure Hour, among many other things. Delightful human being. Um, one of the things I love, uh, we all know how fun it is to talk to screenwriters about film, right? To hear what someone who is immersed in the mechanics of it thinks about various things. And one of the things I love about Ben and the way he talks about it is it's always about character for him. 
character, character, character. He doesn't give a shit about plots if it's not about the characters and what they're what was actually happening because of the characters. Mm -hmm. And it took me forty years to get to that spot, just for the record. And Parasite is the one of the most interesting character films I have ever seen in terms of what you think about the people on screen, where your alliances fall, how you feel about the characters. It is, I have never felt so much tension and such a thrill over just thinking, what the hell is going to happen next? And, and, and yes. And now we're not going to do heavy spoilers. Actually, let's not do spoilers you spread this for a little too? bit. Okay. No, no, oh, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get, get to, to the, we'll get, we'll get to the spoilers. Bit. The movie, Undoubtedly, I mean, it's it's not a, a horror um, film; it's a thriller. But, but wait, it, wait, wait! Just before we even get to spoilers, even talking generally about the film is a is a is a tiny bit of a spoiler. I would recommend that if you really are excited about seeing it, maybe turn this off now. Yeah, because yeah. the less you know, the more the thrilling better. the film yes. is. To I be sure, and I can't yeah. wait to even, watch it a even, second time because yeah. I'm sure it's a wholly different experience. Yeah. And it's in theaters uh, in in the states because of the Oscar campaign. Yeah. Oh. Um, so. It is a hat on a hat, though, um, which is the convention to say that, you know, they, they take something literal and and it it is also the metaphor. So the fact that people live, there's a class system and people literally live under people. Yeah. Like, also, they live under people. But and and, <laughs> and writers, and they, he, he wrote, it, you know, and embrace that. And it it's heavy handed enough. Yeah. But there's still so many layers to pull back. Um, and. You know, there are you. Every time you meet a character, he plays. Bong Joon Ho is the director who directed Okta and Snowpiercer and Snowpiercer, yes. uh, and he plays with all of your expectations all the time. You meet a new character and you think, "Oh, I think they're kind of like this," and then you find out, "Oh no, they're totally the opposite of that." Actually, they're also like that. <laughs> yeah. um, there are two families in the film. Let's talk about the the, the main Three protagonists. Families. Well, Family. The, uh, the the main protagonist family is a, a a husband and a wife and their son and their their adult son and adult daughter yes. who are uh, the son is a university student mm -hmm. uh, and the daughter is not yeah uh, it's unclear it's unclear yeah there's I'll a tell lot you, that's unclear may I point there's out there's a lot of ambiguity in this film <laughs> there's no there's there's not even a ton to suggest that they're actually related these four I. I I that was unclear to me for a pretty substantial part of the film. I, I submit that they might not be, and that the film. It, I, I see that point, <laughs> but I think that the the bond that they have, yeah, and the maybe the cultural need for like the you know the thought the 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 parental children relationship yeah, that right is home. there. I I totally get that, and but there's a way in which the the conventions that get played out in the film feel so subverted that I go all the way to maybe that family ain't a family. Hmm. And the other family is a very wealthy yes. family. Yeah. So the Kim family is the, the poor family. And then the, the wealthy family is the, the park family. And, and the park family lives in this amazing architectural masterpiece of a house, that which was, was a completely constructed set. A what, complete, really? A completely constructed outdoor set Yeah. because where light falls in eye lines, like Bong Joon Ho had diagrams in the script as he was writing about eye lines from the staircase to the kitchen to the thing to the thing, and there was they looked for a house and very quickly realized they weren't going to find it, and then they went to the lot where they built the house and spent days tracking where the sun was going and built the orientation of the house to accommodate for the sun based on the plot. Wow, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Wow. The set of the Kim family, that entire street is a set. Yeah. Well, that I can see because of the way they were, the stuff they were doing on it. And the, uh, but yeah. Oh my. Like. But it's not only was the entire street a set, but apparently they were going around to like wrecking yards and dumps and other places and buying chunks of the city to make this set feel super realistic. It, it, These old signs and old doors and old windows. I mean, we say lived in a lot here, but it it's definitely, it has been lived in and then some. The idea that every space that you, pretty much every space that you're witnessing in that film is a space completely constructed is kind of astounding. Well, and the different locations have entirely different, like they're, they're, it's almost shot like different films. Right, like the basement. Yeah, the yeah. basement set is shot in a very grungy kind of mm -hmm. Chernobyl like, kind of way. Yeah, um, 
I, I was gonna say like a seventies, like a yeah. like a seventies, like a Pal and Pacula film, or yeah, something like that. yeah, yeah. And wh- whereas the other, the the expensive home is shot um, almost almost like like the island, like not like a Michael Bay film, but like you know how the island had that whole golden hour, like the whole thing felt like it was shot in the golden hour. It's a terrible the Ewan film. McGregor film, but yeah, the Ewan yeah. McGregor Michael yeah. Bay. Yeah, it's yeah. a bad film. Was that Michael Bay? That's no, Michael Bay. It was Michael Bay. Wow. But it, but like the whole thing is shot golden. Like the whole yeah, thing yeah, was yeah, shot yeah. golden. Hour. It was all yeah, glow, yeah. and the whole house feels like you're in a, in a higher plane. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, I guess. Well, there's a precision to it from the set design to the cinematography to the, even the acting that's not naturalist. Like they are v- very precise in it's their characterizations. Everything. Yeah. I imagine. I don't. I don't know. How, it's it remind me of a David Fincher right. movie. Yeah, and hearing about how they would go, and I'm it's curious. very Fincherian. You're right. You're completely right. I just yeah. made that word up, Fincherian. Yeah, so it sounds good to be like a Finch or David Finch. <laughs> see Gold also, Finch. see also the Goldfinch. Uh, see, see also Peter Finch. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. God, it's so tough to talk about it without talking about this is the, the big thing. moments. It's, so it, it's a film in which these two families intersect, and it is uh, the intersection is um, mostly about class. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than it is about sexuality or romance or friendship. Um, however, those all play some role in it, but it's really deeply about class to me. That's what I took away yeah. from it. Um, and I'm not actually sure what the film's stance on class is, right? That's the kind of the ambiguity that's baked right into the entire thing. Uh and, or or who, who you're supposed to be rooting for. You well, are, that changes you're, moment by moment. I, I, I didn't ever feel like I should be rooting for anyone. Everyone felt like they were... Everyone felt Everyone weird. was unsympathetic to me. The film has a momentum in the first... The sun. Third, yeah, the sun, yeah, yeah. The the Park the birth, son or the... Uh, the Kim the, son. The, the, yeah. No, the Park son. No, no not... The, Park is the rich family, so the Kims. Yeah, no, I... The, oh, the, 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 I, the birthday oh, boy. Oh, I would agree really? with that. The birthday boy. Yeah, he's about, he's about the most unsullied character in the entire. The, I, I would say the two part kids are the are the victims of this whole thing. Yeah, mm. curious. <laughs> I got to think about that more. But there's a momentum in the first third or you know half of the film where these things are falling into place, and you watch it almost like a heist film. In, in the it, planning and the execution, it feels and you like a, revel in it. Yeah. And in the same way that a heist film is super thrilling because you just are super excited to see what's right around the corner, this and, is more like a manners drama in which it has the same tension constantly. But the, And the tension builds up to a point where it you know... like. I'm going to describe a scene where they're they're drinking and they're eating food and they're celebrating, reveling in the success of their their plot. Well, they're bringing the venue that they're in down to their level. And that is so stressful right. to watch. So just a simple scene of a family eating dinner. You are like on the couch in contortions with tension. I was. Uh, Even uh, before the moment oh, happens yeah. where they, they telegraph and that, that something supposed lasts, to be. That scene lasts like it's 10 so long. times longer than I could take. so long. It is I, like the basement scene from Inglorious Bastards. That's what it's like. Yeah. It's almost that amount of tension. It, but but it's, it's, you're sitting there and you're like. Man, I do not. I do not want good things to happen to no, these people. But, but I, I also kind of don't want bad. Like the no. thing that's bad is going to be real bad. Julia had to tell me to stop moving because I was like, ah. Was yeah. like, in- and then he throws a curveball at you. Yeah. At yeah. That, at, right oh, after right. that moment. What a whammy! And, and, and then the film co- goes in a completely different direction. Uh, oh my god! Yeah. And that's only one of the ways the film goes in a completely different direction. <laughs> Before we continue on with the show, I want to let you know that support for Still Untitled comes this week from Microsoft Surface, introducing the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. With its beautiful touchscreen, you'll experience stunning graphics with razor-sharp resolution. Now available with a 13.5 or 15-inch screen. And with the latest processors, there's no project the Surface Laptop can't handle. It's both light and powerful, so you can get more done on the go. Visit surface.com slash laptop3 to learn more. That's surface.com slash laptop3. Now back to the show. I think it's time to talk about spoilers. Let's talk about spoilers. Okay. 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 So if you're at all interested in seeing Parasite, turn this off now. Um, The less you know, the better. Now I say that thinking that Movies like The Sixth Sense and Seven and 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 Fight Club are way better when you know what's going on. I actually think that they're improved by having watched them once. Oh, of course. The second time is you. It, um, so I'm done. I'm really looking. I'm really looking forward to seeing Parasite a second time. But 
the like so Parasite starts off like any normal film. You're meeting somebody, they're having a conversation with somebody else, and uh, a young guy, a young man, gets a job tutoring a kid. That's how it begins. Uh, and he goes. So uh, the young man is uh, of the Kim family, yep. and he goes to tutor the son of the Park family, who he's been told is a brilliant artist who needs some real direction. Uh, and it's clear. It's no, no, no. he needs to uh, learn. To, uh, he's teaching the daughter to write, reading, uh, speaking English. English. Oh, right. I'm English sorry. Teacher. It's a sister that's teaching yes. the brilliant yes. kid who's yes. got ADD. Yes, Jessica. Yes. Okay. So yeah, he's teaching the daughter. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. and that, and he gets that job from being passed it from a friend. Right. A reference, a friend yeah. who who wants to date the daughter when she's yeah. older. There's that's the I'm being so unpacking that the that's, way in which he the, the leeches way in which on he's to he's told that there's already a plot, yes. which is that his friend, who's a successful, handsome university student who's about to go abroad for mm-hmm. a year, wants to eventually ask this 16 year old girl out, mm-hmm. but he's giving the job of tutoring her to his friend who he trusts, and and he the friend also sets the stage with the family, which is. The mother's in charge, but maybe not the brightest or yeah, he said she's simple, I think is what he says. Yeah. It's what the translation is, at least. But the, the, and the whole time this Kim family is hustling, the folding of the pizza boxes is right. this whole thing. They're the taking Kim these family jobs lives in this dingy apartment that is literally below street level. Where they're, you know, they're stealing Wi Fi. There's, there's a moment in the beginning when he says the, 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 the street fumigator guy is coming around and they're like, Hey, the fumigator guy is coming. Should we shut the windows? And the father says, no, we'll get free fumigation if we leave the windows open. And they're folding pizza boxes and coughing and holding their breath. And it is, it's horrifying. It is maybe some of the, I I was five minutes into the movie and I thought this is some of the most efficient character building I have ever seen. Um, A friend of mine is a screenwriter. He, his favorite character building sequence is the scene in Gross Point Blank when John Cusack goes to his father's grave and empties a bottle oh of scotch God, on so it, good. leaves yes. the bottle, drives away. No words are spoken. You know everything you need to know. Yeah. And the entirety of Parasite feels like that level of of, of character precision. It's, it's dense in the way that Watchmen is dense. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so the son goes and starts tutoring, uh, and the mother is then talking about her other child, a younger son, Daughter. Who is hard to control. Son, you're right. Sorry. And then they see an opportunity to then bring more of the family in. So and that's, goes, this is where the, the, the kind of. This the is where you realize the, that yeah, there's yeah. more to this family, right? Yeah. The sister shows up, uh, the Kim's sister uh, shows up and pretends to be an art therapist. Yeah. yeah. At this point, I'm thinking, oh, I'm watching the sting. Right. Right. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to, this is a, like a. A heist that's going to wrap around itself, and some stuff's going to happen, and it's going to be a, a lovable romp through, you know. Right. They're they're going to somehow weasel away in and replace the family. Yeah. And so so that goes on for a little while, and then uh, they manage to get rid of the, the sister. Housekeeper. Manages to get no. They get rid of the, the chauffeur. The chauffeur first. first. Yeah. And the bring sister the dad manages in. to pull a little scam to have the suspicion thrown on the chauffeur so that they can install the Kim's dad. As mm-hmm. the new chauffeur. Now there's three of the four family members working for the Parks family when they then reveal that the most difficult to replace will be the housekeeper. Right. Who came with the house. Who came with the house. The house is built, suppose, in the film, the house is built by a famous architect who lived in it until he died. He be- or No, he sold, he it sold it late in his life, but he bequeathed his housekeeper to the new family. Yes. And the Kim family is talking about her as... Oh man, she's there before them. She's they in, love her. That's her house. Yeah. She is. Uh, she seems really. Uh, she seems a little flaky, but she's tenacious. Like they recognize she's a foe. And I remember thinking, she's a foe. Wait a minute, what? She seemed just like a goofy. D- yeah, and just to be clear, there's nothing evil that happens in this film, really, up until the point that the daughter gets the chauffeur sacked. This is true. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, then you're like, oh man, this you're, you're is... just seeing up. You're seeing what looks like opportunism, yeah. uh, opportunism up until that point, and then it gets much malicious. Weirder. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they get the they housekeeper get, sacked. Yep. They yep. get the housekeeper sacked, and that's when it reaches the and apex br- of their success. And right. their mom comes in. So that well, so the, the they get the housekeeper sacked, and the mom comes in to replace the housekeeper. Now all four Kims are working for the Parks, and the Parks have no idea that that's they're right. related. That's right. Well, the son does. The son does. This is one of my favorite it's bits brilliant. of the film. It's so good. How do you convey this on film? The where you, yeah. The son walks over to one of the Kims and like sniffs him. Yeah. And then goes over to another Kim and sniffs them and says to his fam- his parents, the Parks, 
they smell the same, and they smell like the sister. They smell like my art tutor right, yeah. as well. And that is another hat on a hat, because not only is he conveying that that he recognizes and he's telegraphing that you, he they're, they they are familiar to each other, but they are of the same people. They are. They're pores. They are and, the pores. And this is when you immediately cut back to the Kimps back at home realizing that they are going to all need to shower with different products and not cross-pollinate. And that's when you realize they are deeply committed to this ruse and to taking it very, very far. And so very shortly after that, the the Rich family, if we hadn't made this clear, the Parks are super rich, the Kims super poor. The, the Parks family goes on a, on a, a camping trip. Mm-hmm. And now the Kims are sitting in the house as if it's theirs, enjoying this big Chinese meal. Yeah. Sorry, this big, uh, big dinner. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, of takeout yeah. on in the middle of the living room, making of the a parks. mess, making a super big mess. Yeah, and, like and breaking and, bottles, stealing booze, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. And then the, the housekeeper doorbell. comes back. The doorbell rings, and it's the housekeeper who they've gotten rid of because of her garlic uh, allergy, allergy to peach. peaches. Peaches. Peach that's fuzz. It. They told her. They yeah. They put. They they they. Framed her for having TB, <laughs> and the the housekeeper it's, says recognizes them and says not as I I know what type of person you are you are and and it's not I'm not here for retribution I'm not here I recognize the game that you've played and you've played it well but I'm here for another purpose I left something and I left something in the basement and, and literally they go underneath the house and, and that's it, where her into a bunker and and this is where. Everything from her ringing the doorbell, like already watching the Kims eat dinner in this house is super stressful. You're waiting for something to happen you and then the doorbell rings and it gets much worse. And the doorbell rings and it's the housekeeper. You're like, what is the housekeeper doing? Yeah. And then she goes downstairs and it turns out that downstairs there's a secret door and her husband's been living underground in this house for a, like a Four decade? Four years, five Four years. years. On, on the run remember. hiding from um, predators. Uh, predators, exactly. Yes, in pitch black. And this is where it gets like very Kafka-esque. Like he is, is there the, debtor's he is, prison in, in Korea or something? Is this a thing? What's that? I, I, Why I, is he hiding from creditors in a... Anyway, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. Fear, right? Fear. Okay. Survival. Uh, and you realize not only it, like his character isn't just that, you know, it's not just the plot of him needing to hide. It's that he has become this ghost in the house where... He serves a purpose. He sees himself serve. He serves unknowingly to the parks. Like the parks don't know he's there, but he turns on their lights. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I miss this. Oh uh, yeah, their lights blink um, all you, over the place. You see and it's it earlier him actually in the film. operating the lights from you, underground. When the the uh, oh my God. the head of the park household comes it's home every day. It's gonna sound a little like we're insane when we go deeper into this plot. It's and gonna sound see, like we're making this up. You see the lights come on. You assume it's just like a room sensing light, and that's what they assume too. Yeah. But you realize it's this man who's been living underneath he's the house. He's literally the house, the machine. He's turning on lights, turning on lights and he runs to have to do it every time. And he has become a little ghost in this house. And so I shouldn't it's, have watched this when I hadn't slept in thirty hours. Just watch it again. Just I'm gonna go back and watch again. it again. Yeah. Um, and so, and th- that performance of that guy, of that guy. So later on, it's revealed. You hear that the that the, the the young Park son, the brilliant one who's got ADD, that the sister is pretending to be an art therapist for. Um, you've heard that he had a trauma at a birthday where uh, he saw a ghost. And you hear about this, and then it slowly dawns on you that, of course, the ghost must be the husband who lives in the basement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's a point in the film when the camera flashes back to what oh. the son saw at the birthday. I'm getting chills. And so you're looking at the stairs to the basement, which have already been a, like a character in the film. And it's late at night. It's the classic kids, when you're a little child, you're scared of what's in the basement. And it's late at night. He's going to find some food in the fridge. And this is when the husband would sneak and steal some food. They show the black, the, the 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 emptiness of the cavity of the stairwell. Yeah. And what emerges are his eyes. And the thing about this shot is that you've met this guy. You know he looks weird and he's got an intense face and his eyes are really upsetting. And still, that does not, even though you've spent time with this character, this flashback, you're not prepared for how terrifying his eyes are when you know what it's like they come above it's, the stair line. it's one of the scariest moments it's the david lynch film it's um the man behind the, the man the behind the, the, the hall and drive yes yeah it's, it's that. exactly oh, that wow and yeah. i oh it's one yeah 
<laughs> and that's not even how crazy it gets. This is literally the first part of crazy. <laughs> Just a lot of the back half of this movie, oh, guys. Oh, dude, there's a garden. So do you remember Monty Python where they did the Sam Peckinpah garden party where everyone's arms are severed and blood is spraying everywhere? Yes. That actually happens in this movie. Um, <laughs> there we go. That's just what, look, I, I don't think we can even start to go into the plot lines of the, ta of the, of the third act of this film. Cause it's so interwoven and so convoluted and bizarre, but people are murdered in the open at a party and blood is spraying everywhere. And there are body counts and, um, runs through the rain with houses sinking and it's completely batshit. And, and as batshit it is, the, what's important about this film is the subtext that slowly surfaces the the relationship between the uh, the the father the Kim father and the Park father, how those those bonds like that relationship is you see what's beneath the surface yeah and he reveals what's beneath the surface and it's so unsettling and it's you know it's the face of society it, well and that's the thing so you watch you know classically you watch the movie The Fighter with with Mark Wahlberg and and Christian uh, uh, Bale and you realize at the end that the fighter is Christian Bale right you realize oh the title's about a different guy than I thought it was right well, and Parasite does the same thing. Who, what, who's the Parasite? You start out, 20 minutes in, you have one answer. 40 minutes in, you have another answer. At the end of the film, it's kind of, the answer is all of the above. Yeah, yeah. And, it, it, you know, it's it's like, it's the class system on society is the Parasite on the human condition. Yeah. I mean, that's literally where this film sort of gets to with a point of view. Yeah. Oh. The, the heavy rain scene where you have... <laughs> You know the the parks come back from their trip because it's it's raining and they're talking about oh how great it is that you know it's going to clean you know everything's going to come back smelling so fresh in their backyard at the same time the Kim family is scrambling because their entire street is flooded well, and they're and, being buried in this flood and this and this is the scene of the post their escape from the ridiculous confluence of events back at the house during the yeah. dinner uh, in which they left the big mess and. It is their descent. They literally descend from the castle on high to their basement hovel, which is underwater, and they're drowning in their house. Wow. Oh, it, it is maybe the most thrilling film I've seen in years. Uh, I, can't, I can't recommend it enough. Everything you've heard about it, you know, again, I hope you haven't listened to all of this <laughs> without, without having seen without it. Seen it. Uh, and love to hear your comments. Yeah. yeah. Um, I... I I'm so excited that there are still so many places to find thrills and weirdness and awesomeness in filmmaking, especially from corners that you don't necessarily expect. Bong Joon-ho has always made films that subvert expectations. Uh, and this is an, I just can't wait to see what he does next. That sounds like it's good a place <laughs> to wrap it up. <laughs> Um, All right. Uh, this week on the Tech Pod, uh, uh, we talked about security best practices. Ah, because uh, I got hacked last week. Oh. Really? Yeah, I had an if TTT uh, if this then that account hooked up to my Twitter that was mm -hmm. very old and had a bad password on it that was apparently public that I didn't realize was I thought it was the other one that was hooked up, and somebody was able to post stuff on my Twitter. It wasn't bad, Ooh. but I had to go back and change a lot of passwords and had to do a bunch of and ironically. Uh, we, this happened the day after we recorded this episode. And if I had been following my best practices, I would have been fine. Can I tell you at one point at OrdCamp? Um, uh, sorry, te techpod.content.town. At one point at OrdCamp, I sat down with some security researchers to find out the level of security difficulties in knowing what you can trust from your chip manufacturer, even oh. if your chip manufacturer is Intel. Yeah. That, like... There are that even if you know the exact architecture of a chip, you still not be may not be able to find the the vulnerabilities within it within your supply chain. Where's and the, the fab? And the ways in which it turns out, you remember the Apple memory leak where the the, the bus was talking to the buffer memory, and that was where the password was being exposed. It's like that problem exists in everything we own across the entire world times a gazillion. It's terrifying. I'm glad you're talking about best practices um, for security. Well, so the upshot is I, I, as a result of this hack, the update that we'll go into the next time we record probably is that I'm going to start doing two-factor hardware. Mm -hmm. So with like YubiKey type, uh, that, right. that stuff for at least 
like a primary account that is the end all catch all of all the other accounts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was an interesting conversation, and uh, you can find you can listen to it now. It's up. It should be up now. Awesome. Okay. This is next week. All right. And the address again? Techpod.content.town. Thanks, Adam. Mm-hmm.